Perfect. How's everybody doing today? Y'all having fun so far? Can y'all clap it up for Miss Rika, please? Wow, I see some familiar faces, some people that I know personally who have saw me grow up. Um, I got to give a shout out while I'm here. Can y'all just do me a favor and clap it up for uh, Mr. Willie Malone? <laughs> Willie. He kind of watched me grow up, coached me back in the Britannell area. Um, and so it's just cool to kind of see how everything has come to pass and how I'm with you all today. My only desire, my ask of you all, is as I'm going through this presentation, is that you have an open mind, um, you're attentive, and when I ask for the engagement, y'all give it to me. Can y'all do that? Yeah. Can y'all do that? Yeah. Professionalism. Now, when we're going through this presentation, I don't want anyone to ever think that I'm coming from a place of I know everything, I have it all together, I have all the answers, but rather I'm going to share with you all my perspective, how things have came together for me professionally and what I've learned about the art of professionalism. I think it would be fitting if I first started off by kind of letting you guys know who I am, what it is that I do. I am the founder and CEO of Jameson Consulting Group, LLC. Uh, we are a leadership development consulting company. We focus on student consulting, staff trainings, and public speaking training. So I do quite a bit in the district with elementary, middle, high school students with leadership programming. Inspirational speaker, life coach. By the way, I don't like going through all this stuff. It sounds like you're bragging, but I have to do it. Um, over nine years of consulting experience with Columbus City Schools, community organizations, and higher education. Um, I've had partnerships with Capital, Ohio State, Wright State University, North Carolina a t State University. Do I have any Aggies in the house? No Aggies? <laughs> any Buckeyes in the house? Any Wolverines in the house? <laughs> Workshop facilitator, public speaking, and coaching. So, and this is me, a picture of me dancing during a photo shoot. Shout out to my photographer, Roger. Can y'all clap it up for Roger too while he's here, please? <laughs> Professionalism, the competence or skill expected of a professional. I think we all can probably agree that on its surface level, the very fundamental idea of being professional is being competent at what it is that we are supposed to be doing. In transportation, in business, consulting, teaching, educating, whatever the case is, the baseline fundamental practice, the idea is that you're competent, is that you know what I'm paying you to do. I'm gonna say that again, is that you know what I am paying you to do. Now, what I think we should do is kind of break down the differences between a professional and professionalism, because there is a difference. Many of us would probably consider ourselves professionals, consider what we do, a job, a career. We are professionals. We're compensated for our work. You may be deemed as an expert or very knowledgeable in your fear, field. You have the actual job title. Um, and you are a professional in your field of study, career, or job path. However, just because I am in a role as a professional doesn't necessarily mean that I exhibit or display professionalism. And so when we're looking at professionalism and we go through this PowerPoint even more, these are some of the things that I want us to keep in mind. And remember, I'm not coming from a place of acting like I know everything, acting like I have all the answers. It's not like that. But I do think my perspective 
could be beneficial. An accepted behavior or attitude. Ethics, your actions and mindset that directly impact work performance. Your expectations for yourself. Everybody say, my, my. Expectations, expectations for myself. We have our own expectations, and then we have the expectations that the workplace has for us. I'm going to say that again. We have our own expectations, and then we have the expectations that the workplace has for us. And what happens throughout the course of life, I've seen this, I've talked with many people, I've studied this kind of stuff, as time goes on, we may forget to set goals, we may forget to challenge ourselves and our expectations for ourselves lower as the expectations in our environment rise. And a conflict begins. Inward professionalism and outward professionalism. I love to wear suits. Not necessarily everybody's thing, depending on what you're supposed to wear to work, what you're comfortable in wearing. But something happens when there is an internal conflict with how we think about ourselves, how we think about our workplace, how we think about the environment, how we think about our friends, our coworkers, our leaders, supervisors, managers. See, I can dress the part every day and internally hate going into that environment. I can put a smile on my face. I can put on the best suits. For women, I can put on my makeup, get my hair done, wear my nicest dresses and skirts. But I really hate the environment I'm going in every day. And this is where conflict arises. I have had many, many, many conversations because what helps me become a better speaker, consultant, is by having conversations, dialogue, studying, workshops, speaking intimately with different groups of people so that I can understand where they're coming from and what they're asking of Nate. And I found it common and quite fascinating that there's this internal conflict between what I'm expressing on the outside and what I really feel on the inside. So the question now was, how do we get over this hump? How do we change this narrative? There are probably some people in here right now, I know it is. Say that again, who said that? <laughs> and, and I'm not trying to get anything started. That's not, that's not my, my reason for being here. But there are probably some people here right now who wake up every single day you work hard, you get up early, you work late, you got a family to take care of, you got a spouse to serve, you got kids to go to sporting events with, you coach somewhere, but you wake up every single day and there's this conflict between what's on the outside and what's on the inside. And so something that we were once excited about has now become a slow death every single day. <laughs> my appearance, my attire, my attitude, my conversations. Can we read this next part together? I believe this would be powerful if we all understood this. Whether you believe it or not, I would love for us to read this together. My thoughts on my place of work. Oh, I'm sorry, this part. You can look the part, you can dress the part, but if your inward doesn't match your outward, there will always be conflict. Can y'all clap it up for that? Come on, give that a hand clap. I thought that was nice. Let, let's go through it again, because we got some brothers saying, let's go through it again. You can look the part, you can dress the part, but if your inward doesn't match your outward, there will always be conflict. 
Don't make me preach up in this place now. Come on now. Help me, God. <laughs> but, but this is something that many people experience. I've experienced it early in my life before I branched out on my own and began doing my own thing in business and consulting. I found myself in environments where I was constantly in turmoil. But it wasn't necessarily with my coworkers, it was with myself. Because every single day, I put on a front, and I woke up in the morning, and I had to lie to myself. And so that conflict affected my on-the-job performance over and over and over and over again. It's not enough for me to put on my, my work uniform, for me to put on the company shirt, for me to go to company events and play the part when behind closed doors I'm struggling, I hate what I do, I'm over it. So my job here today is to help us all reflect. When I do speeches or presentations, the best thing that I believe I do for people is help them look at themselves. Not necessarily look at Nate, but help you look at yourselves so that we can each make the improvements that we need to make. Does that make sense? Everybody repeat after me. Say, we can, we can make, make some, some changes. changes. And here's the thing. If you don't believe that you have anything to improve on, God bless you. Then, then that, that's good for you. Because maybe this presentation and what I'm saying isn't for you. But I'm a firm believer that we all have work that we can do. So, may I have volunteers? May I have five to seven volunteers? Just raise your hand if you're willing to volunteer. Just pick them. Willie with the orange shirt. Come on down. Yep, you're coming on up. Clap it up for the volunteers. Clap it up. Come on down. Yeah, that's fine. That's fine. Come on down. More engagement, the better. Come on down, come on down. I love to do this exercise with an actual mirror because as it reads up here, the purpose of mirrors is that it allows us to see ourselves. Before we leave the house, we all kind of share this common thing. We look in mirrors, we get dressed, we get prepared for the day. And we put on the image of who we want to be for the day. Either we hate that person, we love that person, or we're unsure who's in front of us. Either we hate that person, we love that person, or we're unsure who's in front of us. Can you imagine? I can because I've been there. Waking up, prepping yourself, getting dressed, putting on a mask to go and be somebody else that you're not necessarily happy with in the workplace or waking up with an attitude that's unappreciative, complaining, gossiping, because it affects our performance. See, we see one another, maybe on a daily basis, maybe weekly, maybe monthly, maybe at trainings, but you don't know what it took that person to get there that morning. All I'm asking for 
is for us to become more aware as we look at ourselves. So this is what we are going to do. I'm going to hold up this mirror and I want each of my lovely volunteers to come down. You can speak into the mic and I want you to tell us each who you are in the workplace and who you aspire to be moving forward professionally. We're going to keep this professional. Who you... <laughs> And here's the deal, the mirror is symbolic because the mirror becomes a statement that you tell yourself. It is difficult for many people to look themselves in the mirror and say something they mean. I've been there, I know how to lie to myself. That's why I can talk about this stuff so passionately. So we're going to use our Mir, can y'all clap it up for our first volunteer? <laughs> who you are in the workplace and who you aspire to be moving forward. My name is Morgan Malone. I am in the workplace and I am very comfortable with my job. Okay. And I came to work dressed comfortably. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> I aspire to be retired and comfortable. I know that's right. <laughs> All right. <laughs> who you are in the workplace, the real you, and who do you aspire to be moving forward, moving forward professionally? I am Marcus Long. I am in the workplace, a hard worker, and what I want to be able to do is just better than the day before. All right, all right. Clap it up, clap it up. There you go, hi. I'm Sherry Addicts, and I look at myself every morning and tell myself I love myself. All right. It's time to live and learn and enjoy because short life is too short. Yes. Everybody loves yourself. All right. I love that. Clap it up. Oh, they turned it up for you. My name is Leah Easley, and when I will look in the mirror, I come here. I come here relaxed, I come here comfortable, I come here to do my job and make these kids get to school and do what they need to do, and I'm comfortable with doing that. Mm -hmm. And it ain't too hard, so I ain't doing too much, I ain't doing too little. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Next person. How you doing, sir? Get it right, get it right. Bernard <laughs> Rickerson. Bernard Rickerson. I am king. Yes, sir. I'm a child of God. Yes, sir. I mean something. Yes, sir. I'm a father, a warrior, a conqueror. Yes, sir. Clap it up for that. Clap it up. Clap it up. We got one more. She's trying to hide in the back, y'all. Oh, we ain't doing that today. No, no, no. I'm all the things he just said I was. I come to work every day. I mean, not every day, but I come to work. I do come to work and have my best. I know that's right. And I inspire my kids, I always get them pumped up. I'm an unassigned driver, and this is what I tell them. My name is Lisa, they call me Mama Bill. Yeah. All right. Hey. 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 All right. Hey. I didn't know she had boys, too. Can y'all clap it up for our volunteers again, please? Clap it up for our volunteers. Thank you all. Thank you. Wow. Oh, y'all got some characters, Lord. <laughs> I'm thankful that they all stepped up and were willing to do that. So the first part of the presentation, I intentionally just wanted you all to begin thinking about 
who you are before you leave the house and who you are after you leave the house. Because each of those things has an impact on our performance professionally. We're gonna break the presentation into two segments. So I didn't, I didn't give you too much just yet.